Uh, good morning. My name is Mateo Diaz. I'm Enzo Cole. I'm Maria Benson. We did the integration of our solar thermal collector system for our trolley that we have here at FIU. Our task was to design and manufacture a thermal collector system that would harness the natural energy provided by the sun and be able to convert it into electrical and thermal energy to power the AC system of the trolley, among other components. So this is actually a project that will have further future work done by other groups, as you saw from the one our goals and motivation for this project, we wanted to help create an environmentally friendly method of transportation that could reduce, that could help reduce gas emissions as well as use cleaner or renewable energy, which in this case we're using the sun. We also want to enhance the environmental friendly or, or uh, mentality of culture around uh, FIU and further expand to the community, the city, and reach further expansion. And to get students further involved or interested in developing renewable energy projects, which is something that the Eco Engineering Club is doing here. All right, some of the issues that uh, we're seeing a lot of environmental issues all around the world. These two pictures that we have here, they're actually from Medellin, Colombia. Um, as you can see from the bottom picture, the two pictures were taken about a month apart at the same time of the day. And you can see from the bottom picture, there's a lot of contamination or uh, smog around the city. So this is, uh, this is one of the big issues that we're seeing all around the world and something that we're trying to help uh, improve. These are some of the standards that, that we followed when developing this project. They're stated by the Florida Solar Energy Center. Basically what they state is that once you're creating or working on a solar collector system, you want to you want you need to abide by these standards in order to guarantee that your system is safe and operable. Okay, and within our actual project we use three different forms of heat transfer, we use the conduction, convection, and radiation. And these are just the corresponding equations which we actually use to calculate each one of those values. This was our first first proposed design. Uh, even though it was pretty simple, we ended up describing this idea due to the fact that it presented a uh, height or dimension issues for, for once it was going to be used on the trolley. Where we came up with our second design, even though our second, we optimized the, the, the actual fitting and the actual dimensions of, of our design, however, with further development, further uh, work, we ended up coming with a third design, which is our final proposed design. Uh, this design is the one to be used on the actual trolley. If you notice from the previous two designs, we were we had the idea of incorporating an external case that would help us generate a greenhouse effect on the system to maximize the heat. Uh, for this one, we don't have the need to use that external case because the system is enclosed within, so it is it is its, its own case. Uh, and I should mention that for for once the system is actually incorporated on the on the physical trolley that we have here, the, the idea is to basically remove the existing the existing roof of the trolley and replace it with this entire system. So this would serve as a as a new roof for the trolley. Uh, if you notice, our bottom and top surfaces are, are curved surfaces, and these these two surfaces go by their parabolas with by this equation that we have here. The reason we we chose parabola curvature is because parabolas have a, a focal point at the center. So we wanted to take advantage of, of this phenomenon as to where if you have solar rays striking the the thermal collector at any given angle. Uh, once they strike the first parabola, they will tend to be redirected towards the center, and whichever rays are not immediately redirected, they will go, they will continue to go at the angle as they're coming in, and once they bounce off the bottom parabola, they will be redirected to the center. So we have a central focal point, a region, where we're going to have the maximum amount of heat. And if you notice from the design, we have two, two central pipes, two straight central pipes running through the center, through that central heating region. This is just a simple breakdown of the components of our, of our design. The bottom is to be made of fiberglass, the piping is copper, and front, back, and top are to be made of a white portable tape glass. Now, a question that came up a lot once we were developing this design is how, since we're going to have this on top of the trolley, how we're going to keep the cabin cool for the passengers, being that we're generating heat above them. And what we did is, since we did a simple simulation showing how fiberglass works really well in dissipating heat, so even though we're generating heat, the fiberglass uh, dissipates the heat door as to where we can keep the cabin at a at a good temperature for the passengers. And due to, due to project constraints, we ended up working on a one six scale model prototype, which we have here. Uh, this, this was scaled down from the dimensions of the trolley that we have here. You can always scale it up to any other dimensions or any other trolley that you may have. And we use so, sort of different materials. We use wood for the bottom, and we use, instead of the glass, we use acrylic for, for the actual top and front and back. Conducted a simple simulation to see to show you how we expected the flow to be. We have an inlet, and here we have the outlet. And from this uh, simulation, we were able to determine the volumetric flow rate, Reynolds number, and Nusselt number. Okay, so for the construction of the prototype, we started by sending the drawings to Floria Kitchen Center, where they produce 45. 
45 of those trips that we were able to put together with a threaded rod. And then we pasted the, that base to a wood board to make it easy to carry it around and also prevent any movement of the whip. Here we are sanding the surface of the, of the base just to get it smoother as uh, we would use this later to mold the acrylic. And here we, we spray painted the base with plastic dip to prevent the to prevent it from damaging if it gets in contact with water. Also, we wanted to go with black color to attract more heat. Then we proceeded to cut the the acrylic sheet, and then we use a heat gun and started applying pressure against the the base to to keep the the right curvature and we got it to mold it like that. Here we're we are adding an aluminum sheet we nailed it to the base to create re reflection to the system. And then we proceeded to, to bend the copper pipes. For the copper pipe to, uh, to get the curve of the system, we just applied pressure ourselves with uh, our hand. And here's a picture of the <coughs> columns that we built for the, the pipe that was running through the middle. Then we cut the acrylic to acrylic, acrylic pieces to, to cover the front and the back, and we use a drill uh, for to create the holes for the inlet and outlet pipes, and we seal the the system with using silicone. Here is the uh, uh, brass fittings that we use to connect the system of uh, the copper pipe with the uh, hose, and that we connect to the the power pump. And here's a picture of the entire prototype. So the cost of the prototype prototype came out to be around three hundred dollars, or and our greatest expense was the copper pipe. Okay, when actually testing, we're limited in, in our actual project to two different testing scenarios where we have the sunny and hot conditions, and then also to cloudy conditions when the um, the sun is mostly out. And due to these constraints, like we were looking into other designs later on for future work. We tested the water going within the actual system. We, um, we measured the temperature of the water going in and then the water coming out, as well as the, the temperature inside the system. We'll put an elect, uh, elect infrared electronic thermometer, and then we later incorporated a retinal lens in order to better optimize our results. Now, on average, on a sunny day, the sun strikes the earth about one kilowatt of energy per square meter. So just taking this information into consideration, since we have a one foot long, one foot wide, um, three, feet, three feet long, one foot wide pro, uh, model, we should generate about just 278.7 watts of energy just from the sunlight striking it alone. And then in order to get an idea about how much energy we would need in order to just double the temperature from room temperature to 50 degrees Celsius, we did some basic um, heat transfer calculations and found out that we need about 4,615 watts in which we order need to generate. Now this is just some pictures in which we use about our actual testing, how we went about testing. And like I mentioned earlier, we incorporated, we incorporated our friends on lens in order to better optimize our actual results. And before we actually, what you can see on the right is uh, is where we use spare materials in order to, we didn't want to risk compromising our model, so we used spare materials in which we had early, which we had left over in order to test it out. Now, when we had, when we're actually testing the pump, so since the pump is relying upon solar power, so the more sunlight which the pump receives, the better the pump actually operates at, we, we took the, the results of the operating operation of the pump in three different conditions, and then we compared it to what the op the optimal setting which the pump is supposed to activate at. Now, one thing we noticed when we were doing this that the lower the flow rate the, was that the hotter the temperature of the water would actually become. So the more time allowed within the system would generate more heat. And once we had all those values, we were then able to calculate Reynolds number and also number. Now the reason why we use Reynolds number and Nostal number, so these are two dimensionless numbers in which we could use as a scaling factor for any size. So if we were to scale this up to the actual to the actual full size model, we'll be able to use this these numbers in order to follow the same exact trend for a much larger or even a much smaller model. Okay, so here as Anson mentioned before, we used some leftover material to test the the present lens. So the yellow lines show 
the temperature of the copper that was inside of the system and we tested it at the same time having the, a copper pipe under the Fresnel lens and that that's represented there with the gray line as you can see it, uh, it shows uh, uh, in an important temperature difference uh, between the, the two. Then we were actually able to test the system by um, putting the, the Fresnel lens. So here's our ambient temperature and then the, the blue line is only the, the water coming out from the system uh, itself and the red the red one represents the water coming out of the system when we use the Fresno lens. It's about uh, nine degrees different than what we were able to, to get. Now, the actual information which we gather, so this is just a, um, the weather conditions and how much the values in which we actually calculated. So, as you can see, we were able to achieve much more energy when we actually incorporated the lens within our actual system. We still fell short as far as how much energy in which we needed to produce just to increase by where we're actually aiming for. These were um, considerations which we took into factor that we were we felt that we were losing heat and just within our system alone that the heat would dissipate. So, like the slightest cloud would kind of like but um, mess up our numbers a little bit. And so as far as to take that in consideration as far as future projects as well. And so on a social and global level, we felt that our project could pretty much be able to help everybody worldwide due to the fact that worldwide, we share similar issues as far as energy and then um, eco um, issues in which we actually could provide worldwide. And since we are using a renewable form of energy, this is a form in which we could kind of give back to the environment as well as as well as energy and then the materials in which we actually use can be, and the data in which we provide it can easily be found in any well developed nation around the world. And so just, just some background info, just on an economical level on a whole, we feel that our project will be useful due to the fact that just within the past five years that solar jobs have more than doubled and that also oil and gas firms have cut a tremendous amount of their actual extraction jobs within just the past few months. So renewable energy is becoming more of an important aspect within a company. So this trend will just steadily rise and then um, more companies will start to sway more um, with, uh, sway more against not using non-renewable energy. And so things in which we take um, with us for lifelong learning is the factor of just since my teammates and I, we all come from different backgrounds and we all have different abilities. We all have something to bring to the table. So we're able to learn from one another as far as, and then teamwork was a, a, a very important aspect and then making sure that we were able to communicate with one another and make sure that we're all on the same page and that we're able to conduct this model within a timely manner to make sure that everything got done appropriately, as well as the fact to understand the actual economical aspect and what we could bring to the table, and then being able to get a realized hands-on experience to be able to take what we've learned in the classroom and then apply it into an actual real-life model. And so this is just a breakdown of the team member responsibilities, but overall, we were each, we were all responsible for making sure that the model itself got done completely. And this is just our projected timeline in which we So for the future work, we would need to incorporate a low flow and high pressure uh, pump. Also, it, it, we would incorporate the, a photo-type white glass. And the system will have to be a hybrid system since uh, it, depend, it highly depends on weather condition and also uh, ensure proper sealing. So in conclusion, our, the pump we used was uh, too fast. The use of the Fresno lens did play an important role uh, when, we, when we tested in, in terms of the temperature of the water. Uh, as I just mentioned, the system highly depends on the weather conditions. And we calculated the dimensionless values that, so that it will work as a uh, scaling factor. Right, just, we just want to extend our special thanks to Dr. Tremonte, our faculty advisor, Mr. Wilman, and people at the Florida Kitchen Center. They were tremendous help when we actually needed to manufacture our, our prototype, especially the, the wood base. They, they provided uh, the wood CNC machines to us where we can actually cut the, the ribs and to mold the acrylic. 
Uh, Larry from Home, Dep from Home Depot, he was tremendous help when we actually needed to purchase our our, um, our components and all our parts. He he spent he took time out of, out of his shift to walk around with us throughout the, the store and help us out. Uh, Sergio from Aer Aeronautical Engineers, he was he was great helping giving advice as how to uh, uh, actually go about bending and forming the pipe to to the coverages that we needed. And all of our family members uh, and friends that were tremendous help and support throughout the entire project. Uh, this is just a quick video of how our system is working. As you can see here, we have the, the, solar, the solar panel for our pump. We have the two reservoirs, one for in, one for out. You can see that water is coming out. And this is just a complete overlay of, of the entire system of how it's working. Thank you very much. If you were going to uh, put this on top of a bus, would you put a whole series of these? Would you make them wider, shorter? I mean, you made a model, but would that model encompass the entire top, be one system of tubing going back, or a series of things? It would actually be the, the entire length. So since this one was it's a one six scale of the, of the trial that we have here, once you scale it up, is to is to run the entire length of of the of the of the trial. Yeah. And, and the same width. The width of the trolley yeah, as well? Basically, a solar collector will be replacing the roof of the trolley. All the way across? Yes, yes sir. Yes. What, what made you think about using a Fresnel lens as you went along? Did, did, was that something you added, or did you think about that right from the beginning? Well, actually, no. There was a demo of our, of our advisor. He, he just suggested to use that, and it did, did help us a lot. Because we wanted to simulate what the actual photosynthetic um, glass in which we actually put on top of it because it, since acrylic we felt that we weren't getting that that central focusing point and which with the actual so we felt like the sun the sun rays weren't bouncing where we actually expected to so we used the Fresno lens in order to kind of simulate what it would actually be on the actual full size model to get an idea. If you go to the Hillsborough Lighthouse they have a big reflector behind it and they put it in the mid 1800s, and when the sun came up, it would go through the Fresno lens and set the fields on fire. So they put a reflector behind it. And that's why most lighthouses don't have it because they go around. But the, that's how bad the Fresno lens, or how concentrated the fire would get. That's why. That's why we tested on um, leftover material first because oh, yeah. we were we were afraid that it would um, hurt the the acrylic. The DOT. Going, going to use the energy collected. Are you going to use this to power the bus? So, so the idea was to, so this is just a, one aspect of the actual project. The other aspect, which a future team will be working on, actually another senior one team, would be to then take this heated water and then transport that water into a solar absorption chiller, which then the heat would then be extracted from there, which would the solar absorption chiller would serve as the AC system for the actual trolley. And so pretty much that's where a large majority of the energy would be dedicated to. And then we wanted to incorporate the Fresnel lens, the, at, no, the, the photosynthetic glass, as a, a, a second means of energy to transporting that energy into, per se, an electric trolley. So then converting that energy from, from that in order to actually run if we have enough to run, to make like a hybrid system to actually run the trolley as well as some of the electrical components on board. But the primary purpose was to just power the actual AC system, which is a separate, it's not actually, we were actually responsible for that. It's just an actual separate group in which we'll be performing that actual task. Do you know how much temperature delta you need to successfully run the solar absorption chiller for the application? For the full scale one, uh, full scale one, it was 305 degrees Fahrenheit. So how many of these, or how big would this need to be to get you 305? So that's where the full size model it would have to be about I think it's 18 feet long and six feet six, six feet wide, and mainly due to the fact that we would have to use different materials, like you said, we have to use. Um, carbon fiber, we we'll have the, the fiber, yeah, fiberglass for the insulated material to prevent heat from dissipating to the passengers, the photosynthetic glass, and then just better materials in which have like a higher um, thermal conductivity to just attract more heat and then be able to make sure that the heat 
stayed with the natural system, creating that greenhouse effect and maximizing the temperature within the system on a whole. Did you optimize the, the flow path here um, in the copper? Did you do any work to determine uh, how much copper you needed to put in the system and how close those, those copper hoops need to be in order to, to maximize the opportunity here? Well, the thing is, the longer the water is inside of the system, uh, the higher the temperature uh, gets. So for this one, actually, we, we got uh, into a, a little issues when we were trying to bend it. We did want to create more uh, small, like a, a smaller path, but due to material and uh, the way we can manufacture, we, we weren't able to do that. Because within the full size model, we just had the idea of just having one long continuous pipe just to allow this, the water enough time and enough, be able to suck up enough energy in order to heat up in the act like in which we actually wanted it to. Okay, uh, and vibration. Um, did you take into account the vibration from the trans the, the trolley in your design? That's that's why we chose to use um, the um, yes because it was just uh, it was just a durable material which we actually. Well, I, I mean, I was looking at your stick, your stands. Mm -hmm that aren't mounted to the copper? Is there a yeah. reason why? Well, that was just uh, when we actually producing it, that was just an error. It, on an error, okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, yeah, I mean, once, once it's actually built on the actual, for the actual trolley, uh, I mean, the, the whole copper pipe needs to be securely fastened to the, to the base, and the ones running through the center will be securely fastened, like, to, to the support system. It will all be supported from the base. one, we just wanted to give an idea that we did think about the, the pipe that was going through the middle, and of course not uh, on, on top of something.